What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, two stocks, two companies that are not profitable at this moment, but definitely do offer a lot of opportunity in the future considering that these are high risk, high reward plays. I wouldn't necessarily call them high risk, but yes, there is definitely a lot of execution risk because of the fact that they're not profitable. So this is going to be a little bit of a different type of video. You guys know that on the channel, I mostly cover and talk a little talk about uh, companies that are profitable with positive free cash flows, very strong EBITDA, little to no dilution, very great balance sheets as well. But this is going to be a little bit of a different video where these are two companies that have excellent balance sheets, but they're not necessarily profitable. They're on their way to potentially becoming profitable in the future. And for those reasons, um, there is potential opportunities in these because once the company starts to turn the tide right once they are turning the corner towards profitability that's where they start to get a lot of validation from institutional investors that's where the big money starts to flow in because they are looking at earnings they're looking at bottom line earnings per share and right now these companies don't have that so a lot of the gains actually do come in after the companies have done the execution validated themselves in the market and become profitable that's what we notice with Tesla. That's what we notice with a lot of companies on a day-to-day -day basis. So hope you guys enjoy this different style video where I do talk about two non-profitable companies, which do carry a lot of risks. So definitely, uh, I want to I wanna emphasize on that. And make sure that you drop a like and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. There is a 16% annual discount still available and valid for a few more days if you're interested in that as well. So the first company on the list is going to be a company called Twilio, ticker symbol T L T W L O. And Twilio is, for those of you who don't know, a simple customer engagement platform used by hundreds of businesses and over 10 million developers worldwide. And they pretty much allow a lot of businesses and developers to use and create APIs and pretty much engage with their customers, whether it's through vo voice, text, chat, video, email, there's a lot of different features available, but I wanted to go over some of the fun fundamentals and financials of that company. So what you'll notice for Twilio, by the way, Twilio is down quite a bit. It is trading as low as $54 per share. And since it's high from back in 2021, uh, the stock price is down 88%. At one point, it was down over 91%. So yes, a pretty brutal uh, sell off for Twilio and you know for it to pretty much go back to all-time highs it would need to go up like 800% or so but that's not going to be what we're going to discuss right I'm going to simply tell you about the company what it does we'll go over the fundamentals the financials I've actually done a couple videos on Twilio in the past so you can also check that out if you want to but the market cap has now shrunk down to under 10 billion dollars but if you take a look at the fundamentals right very very strong and consistent growth in revenues right so from about 2013 when they were doing just a little bit under 50 million dollars they've grown that number to over 2.8 billion dollars and every single year they've posted growth right every single year they have been able to increase revenues and trailing 12 months is 3.6 billion this year they're expected to do well over 3.8 close to 4 billion dollars if you take a look at their gross profit right 24 million dollars back in 2013 that's like almost 50 percent gross margins all the way up to 1.3 1.4 billion dollars once again maintaining those margins at 50 percent on the gross profit basis and that's you know very consistent significant growth and you can take take a look at these bar graphs which are straight up going higher in a very parabolic move now one of the reasons why the company is not profitable despite having very strong revenue growth and growth gross profits of 50%, in other words, 50% gross margins, is because of their higher spend on SGNA and R&D, right? So operating expenses, they are spending a lot of money. So almost an identical bar graph for SGNA, which is your selling general administrative expensive, uh, expenses and R&D as well as your research and development. And that's also ballooned from 37 million, 14 million respectively in both categories, all the way up to 1.5 billion and 789 million dollars so their operating income is in fact a operating loss of 26.9 million back in 2013 to now in 2021 915 million dollars and on a trailing basis 1.1 billion dollars in operating loss so that is one of the big reasons right because of the fact that they're growing so fast on the top line revenue basis gross profit basis customers are growing a lot of Key performance indicators and metrics internally are also growing, but on the surface, they're not profitable because they're spending so much money 
on selling general administrative expenses and research and development. That's also because they're growing so fast, but that's also that they're not profitable. So once one thing kicks in, which is called the operating leverage, and the way operating leverage works is that the more you grow, the, the more efficient you become, the more economies of scale kicks in, the less you have to spend on SGNA and R&D, right? So the, it's pretty much more efficiency for the company and you are generating more revenue by by spending less on operating expenses. So that's operating leverage. And then that's when it starts to kind of kick in on the bottom line and the company becomes profitable. So that would be the execution from the company over time. But I obviously wanted to talk about them now because they're nowhere near close to profitability. But if they do get closer to profitability, if they start producing some nice operating income, cash flows, and of course, bottom line net income as well, um, it will only lead to more potential upside for the company from a risk reward standpoint. Now, another very, very significant red flag for Twilio is going to be the diluted weighted share count. So in other words, the shares outstanding has ballooned from 17 million to over 174 million shares. So they're constantly issuing more and more shares to uh, in the market to raise more capital. And that's one of the reasons why the you know balance sheets also ballooned and it's really looking good from a cash standpoint and of course diluted eps is all the way negative negative five dollars and 45 cents and trailing 12 months negative seven dollars and 26 cents so that is a big red flag and eventually we will want to see you know twilio to stop issuing a lot of shares but instead focus on growing the company and making it more profitable and in fact if they have more cash flows and free cash flows they can start to buy back some of the shares outstanding as well this right here is going to be the balance sheet. So the company is sitting on over $4.2 billion of cash. Well, all that share dilution has got to go somewhere. And that's $4.2 billion of cash they're sitting on. And debt is only at $1.25 billion. That means they've got a negative net debt of negative $2.96 billion. So almost $3 billion in excess cash for the company with respect to debt. Um, and the current ratio and quick ratio, very, very strong, very good short-term liquidity of over 574 so this company is not going away anytime soon. They're not going bankrupt because of such high liquidity and, of course, such a nice cash balance as well. Uh, this right here is going to be the valuation. So like I said, they don't have earnings. They don't have EBITDA. They don't have anything except for sales for us to look at. So price to sales right now is sitting at a little bit under three. So that, I think, is actually quite reasonable. Uh, you'll notice the sector median is also 2.74, 2.71. So they are actually very fairly valued in the market, considering after a 90% drop, trading as low as $54. So I have done some analysis on Twilio, and this is strictly based on a price of sales multiple basis. This is not accounting for earnings because the company doesn't have earnings, right? So that's literally the title of the video, non-profitable. So we don't have earnings, so we can calculate the intrinsic value using earnings. So this is a little bit of a uh, another way to calculate the intrinsic value using sales. So what we're doing here is that we're taking into account the revenue of $3.8 billion this year. In other words, 2022, the year just ended. Um, and that growing that number by 14%, that's actually a very, very small growth rate, right? So if you take a look at some of the analyst estimates, uh, what you'll see is that they're actually expected to grow at 33% this year, then 16, then 18, then 18, then 27. So if you kind of average those numbers out, you're going to end up at somewhere around 19 to 20%. So I'm actually going a little bit lower than what the consensus is on Wall Street. So going at, you know, 14% growth for sales, giving them a little bit of a higher price sales multiple because I do think that they are trading at a lower price sales multiple right now than what they should be trading at because it is a company that's in the software as a service, technology, cloud, and of course, customer engagement using APIs. So it is a tech company that does deserve a little bit of a higher multiple, but we can even go down to as low as four, uh, just considering that it's not profitable yet and we're solely dependent on the price of sales multiple and we want to build that margin of safety a little bit. And we get a discount rate of 16%. So usually we use 12%, but we're using 16% in this case because it's a high risk, high reward. So in order to take that additional risk, I want to be compensated with a higher reward and a margin of safety of 30%, not 10%, not 20%, 30%, because it does carry a lot of execution risk and share dilution at 6%. So accounting for that share dilution every single year. And we end up at a fair value of about $40. And currently the stock is trading at 54, represents another 25% downside needed for Twilio. In fact, it was trading as low as low 41s um, just a few weeks ago. So it was trading on December 27th at $42 before rallying a little bit over 26%. So this right here would be very, very good support 
for Twilio at $40. And at that price point, uh, again, one of the things that I want to actually or forgot to mention was that when you're looking at non-profitable companies, companies that don't necessarily have a profit, uh, but you're still interested in that company, right? Because it's got a lot of potential, right? It's got a great idea, great concept, and they can execute and do really well in the future, blah, 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 right? So if you like that company, but it's not profitable, I always encourage everyone to start with a very small position, right? Maybe even less than 1% of your entire portfolio. Just to get a little skin in the game, just to have a starter position, you can do that. And once you kind of build that confidence in that company, once it starts to show signs that it's actually turning the corner towards profitability, you know, next, next few earnings calls, you listen in, you look at their earnings report, and you are starting to build that confidence, you can always add more in the future. You can always continue to dollar cost average with a bigger and more sizable position. But I always, you know, go against this idea that if you like the company and it's not profitable, already start to go all in uh, and, you know, pretty much dump everything that you have in that stock in hopes of them executing and becoming profitable in the future. Because in, in my method, you can always add more. That's always an option. But in the other method, you're pretty much, you know, hoping that the company executes and you have your, you know, all your pretty much capital locked up in that stock. And, you, you know, then it becomes very difficult to maneuver in that trade. So that is what I've mentioned before is that, look, if you find a great company that meets all the qualitative analysis checks and all the quantitative analysis checks is profitable, is generating free cash flows, is, uh, you know, got a great balance sheet trading at a very decent low valuation, little to no dilution. So those things that we look for in a company, if it meets all those check marks, great. We can dollar cost average, we can build out a bigger position depending on our conviction level. But if, the, if those things are not met, if it's a non-profitable company and all the things that we talked about, then start small. Start small with that company. So that's going to be the idea with Twilio uh, is that I do like the company. I think it's got a lot of potential for, uh, to becoming something bigger than what it is right now. Uh, but it's, you know, still it's got problems, right? Dilution's a problem. Uh, of course, we've got a problem with profitability and the amount of spend that they're doing in operating expenses. So those are some issues that they need to fix over time. So $40 is going to be a little bit of an intrinsic value depending on a very, very, you know, moderate to low growth rate of sales, 14%, decent multiple, and a lot of discount rate and a lot of margin of safety built in with a little bit of share dilution as well, because that's pretty much been what they've, do, they've done over the last nine, 10 years. So that's going to be the first stock on the list. And the next company, by the way, first, last thing I want to go over is that EPS is expected to become profitable by 2023. So maybe this year is the year when the company becomes profitable. But of course, they will be trading at a very high forward P multiple of 383 because they're just getting profitable. Remember Tesla, 1000 P days. Now it's come down to like 20. That's what happens. And exactly that's what's supposed to happen as your earnings continue to ex accelerate in the future. So 383 down to under 13 by 2026 as their EPS gets to over $4.16. That is how math works. And that is how price earnings multiple also work. So next company on the list is going to be PANW. That is going to be Palo Alto Networks. Now I have done analysis on CrowdStrike, Palo Alto Networks and Fortinet and a lot of other companies uh, in the cybersecurity sector. My favorite by far is going to be Fortinet because it is already a profitable company. It is a company that's generating free cash flows. It's got an excellent balance sheet, little to no dilution. Um, so Fortinet, my number one choice when it comes to cybersecurity, but the valuation is a little bit too high for this. So we'll wait for the price to be appropriate in this sector. Uh, another one that I really like is CrowdStrike. I've done an analysis on them, so make sure they do check that out. It is, uh, you know, so right now we do have a swing trade idea on CrowdStrike. Uh, and in the past, you know, day it was up 1.5%, kind of curling back higher from that support. And our target's up to 108. So right now, you know, we've got a swing trade idea on CrowdStrike. But Palo Alto Network is also a very strong player when it comes to cybersecurity um, and offering those services across the board. Uh, when it comes to firewall and a lot of other advanced uh, Palo Alto Network products that they have. But if you take a look at the fundamentals for them, very nice and consistent growth in revenues and profitability. Once again, it's exactly almost identical to Twilio. So if you take a look at the revenues, 361, 396 million, grown that to over $5.5 billion. Very substantial growth. Again, if you take a look at the bar graph over here, look at that growth. Every single year, they've been able to grow revenues and profitability, right? 286 million, all the way up to $3.7 billion. So 3.7 divided by 
5.5 is going to be about a 67% gross profit margin. So very good margins for the company. But at the same time, if you take a look at their bar chart, bar graph for selling general administrative expenses and R&D, research and development, almost identical as they have also grown and ballooned to over $3.6 billion. So on an operating basis, they are generating an operating loss, very similar to what we just looked at for Twilio. So once again, they're not profitable, but the good thing is that they're not issuing as many shares as Twilio. So, you know, only only a moderate dilution from 206 million to 295 over the last 10 years. So moderate dilution from the company and EBITDA also is negative, positive, negative, positive. It's a little bit inconsistent right now, which is exactly one of the reasons why, look, these are companies that have a lot of potential, but they're not showing us very consistent fundamentals yet, right? So... Uh, if I, I'm personally, if I'm going to be looking at these companies and thinking about buying very, very small starter positions. And then as my confidence builds up, as they execute, as they turn the corner, I can continue to build out a bigger position and dollar cost average even more. Uh, the balance sheet is, I would say, okay. It's not like insanely good, but it's okay. Uh, we do have a cash sitting at $3.8 billion versus debt at just under $4 billion. So the net debt is positive by a very, very small amount, $158 million. Uh, the short-term liquidity is a bit of an issue, right? Current ratio sitting at under one, quick ratio sitting at under one. So that's a... Uh, that's something we definitely want to pay more attention to with Palo Alto Network and debt to free cash flow also at over 6.15. So balance sheet wise, Palo Alto Network doesn't have the best balance sheet, but their cash to debt is quite reasonable, um, you know, just about one to one, which is not the best, but it's also not nice, super bad. Like it's, you know, $158 million, a very small amount that they can definitely pay off, uh, you know, using their EBITDA or free cash flows. Now, valuation-wise, uh, Palos Network did turn towards profitability. Um, this year, I believe, in the last uh, few quarters, they have been able to generate some profits. Net income has been starting to turn. You can see this chart right here and how they are. Their margins are kind of curling back up and they are moving in the right direction. So that's really good. Um, so with that regard, the valuation is definitely high, like on a gap basis, 502 Non-gap basis, 49.40 uh, for, for the uh, price to earnings multiple. Enterprise value EBITDA, 25 on a... Looks like my battery just died, so I just uh, plugged in my computer. So, well, I'll have to check in post whether the recording stopped or was it still recording. So, anyway, as I was saying for Palo Alto Network, the valuation is still a bit too high. So, you know, price to sales trading a little bit over six or seven. So, those are some considerations that we also have to make because definitely we need lower prices, a lot lower prices. We need to kind of build in that margin of safety and that return discount rate um, for the future as well. This right here, again, the, the profitability, 69% gross profit margins, very, very strong, but everything else is straight up negative. Free cash flow margins, 33%, so very strong free cash flows for the company as well, much better than Twilio. Um, and of course, they've got negative all across the board, and that's you know one of the reasons why, uh, it, it, of course, is a non-profitable company, and execution risk is also high. This right here is going to be the earnings per share estimate. So this year, they're expected to grow by 35.68%. Um, and then all the way up to as much as 2027, earnings are expected to grow to as, as, as far as $8.18. And that's going to be a 19.5% growth. And the forward P multiple, look how quickly it drops for this company down to 2016, 12 levels, right? So as earnings are growing, their P multiple is obviously going to come down, right? It's going to decrease over time. This right here is going to be the revenue. $6.89 billion is going to be that revenue number. So that's what we're going to plug in for our estimates for Palo Alto Network. So $6.98 billion. And we're going to take into account the share count over here, whichever that number was, about 
So 297.2, I think it's 6890. Um, and if you take a look at the estimates from analysts on revenue, uh, 21%, 19%, 19, 16, 11, 12, 10, 8, 7. So uh, on average, I would say on a compounded basis, they're expecting at least a 18%, 17 to 18% growth for Palo Alto Networks. I'm once again going to go with a little bit lower number. So we're going to keep it at 14%. 4% multiple for them as well. Um, and then we're going to actually, we can increase that to five. Um, and then discount rate is going to stay put. Margin of safety is going to stay put. And shared dilution is actually going to be a little bit lower, which we're going to put at around 2% because they haven't been as aggressive as Twilio. And of course, the price right now for Palo Alto Network is about $138. So that means another 51% drop needed for us to uh, really be looking into this company from a from a fundamental standpoint. In fact, Palo Alto Networks has not really dropped all that much. It's only dropped 35, 36%. And that's, uh, you know, CrowdStrike obviously has sold off quite a bit, but uh, would be looking at this company at closer to $67, $70 per share in and around these levels for Palo Alto Network. Now, it may seem like, you know, very, very odd, like that's a very far away number, but that's the amount of risk there is with this company. So we have to kind of, price that in, right? We have to build in that risk so that we don't overpay for a company that may never become profitable. So because of the fact that it's not profitable, that's why there's a high level, high degree of risk and which is why we're pricing in a 30% margin of safety. If I do 0%, you know, it comes up to $96. If I do a 12% discount rate, it comes up to 114. Now it's only 16% away from our fair value. But because it's not profitable, we have to account for a higher degree of risk, which is 30% margin of safety and a 16% discount rate for, um, for Palo Alto Network. So hope you guys enjoy this video. I just wanted to go over uh, two stocks that have been asked about um, in, our, in our community, in our Discord. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Twilio and Palo Alto Networks. As always, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and also check out the Discord and the Patreon links down in the description below if you want to join. Of course, be a part of our money investing community. As always, uh, happy investing.